All right, how's everybody doing? We're going to go ahead and start, but probably in the first 10 minutes or so, I'll have to take about a five-minute break. Um, we've got a delivery on the way. It was supposed to have come a half hour ago. It's running behind, and I've been sitting here watching patient, patiently off the front door, uh, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging, so we'll go ahead and get started, and then I'll just pause briefly when the time comes. We've got to decide on a battle here. I'm feeling... Feeling like Manassas is the way to go today. I think I might want to take on the role of Stonewall Jackson at Manassas. I know Zachary would very much love for me to do Pickett's Charge, but I don't know that I'm going to do that one quite yet. Uh, in fact, I'm kind of leaning towards whatever I do, choosing uh, the Confederate side since I did the Union yesterday. Um, just got to decide on a battle. I think Manassas would be a good one to go with. I don't know if the 2v2 works on Manassas. We're going to give it a try. It may crash because um, not all the maps. I was told one of the developers let me know that we're going to go ultra size this time, that the Fort Wagner map, which we kept trying to do yesterday, was crashing. Hey, Pavel, Julie, how's it going? Um, so that was why we were having trouble with that one. So it looks like this one's going to be okay. Um, Uh, switch sides. Okay, so I don't know exactly who I'll be controlling here on this one. Ultra, yeah, it just means bigger aren't bigger unit sizes. They should be a little closer to the full size that they were historically. Yeah, Mr. Beep, I don't know what's going on. Um, make sure you guys when um when you hit the little notification bell, there's two different levels of setting. Um, if you set the notification bell, uh, make sure that you also set it to give you YouTube notifications uh, because I think that's what you have to do in order to get the notifications when stuff goes live. I could be wrong about that. Okay, so it's only the Fort Wagner scenario that does not work, uh, but the map for free play works. Okay, good to know. Did it say I was Johnston? You know, I didn't even pay attention to that. Well, Jackson's part of John Johnston's army, I believe. So, because I think Johnston was the army of the Shenandoah, Beauregard was the uh, the army of the Potomac. So let's take a look and see. Uh, yeah, there's Stonewall Jackson. Um, I'm going to pause for a second, real quick. I love these maps. I think the maps look fantastic. And again, I was looking at this map earlier because I was at the, the Bull Run Battlefield about a year and a half, two years ago. And like I knew my way around. By looking at this map, I knew what I was looking at because it hasn't changed all that much even today, uh, the way the battlefield is. Uh, so this, I believe, should be Henry House Hill right here. Uh, and this is the valley that looks down basically... If you go to the battlefield today, you can see from Henry Hill over to Matthews Hill. Uh, and, and things don't look all that different today than they did then. So, uh, Yeah, that would be awesome. I would love uh, to have the Gettysburg scenarios on a one-to-one -one scale. That would be f phenomenal. Guten Abend, Pastor Pinzi. Um, yeah, because uh, it seems like these streams are pretty popular. Uh, so I think I'm going to be doing a lot more streaming of this mod. I really like the mod. It's a lot of fun. It looks beautiful. Um, and we're probably going to uh, probably going to get into some multiplayer because uh, obviously that's really what these are designed for because the AI so, uh, well, just doesn't go act the way we would like it to. But um, again, this is a battlefield that I visited uh, with my daughter a couple years back. And yeah, the battle kind of starts right here. Uh, just talking through the battle historically, uh, it starts with the Union kind of giving a feint toward um, the bridge over Bull Run Creek, but then the main attack comes down from the, from the north uh, and hits this area right here. And eventually they were driven down into this valley uh, down below and then, of course, up to Henry House Hill where Jackson and others make their famous stand. So that's kind of what we're going to deal with here. We don't control uh, the early fighting units. We are controlling what's going to happen later, kind of like what we did yesterday. Well, hey, Zachary, this is no reflection on 
siding with the Confederates. It's just the reality. We're going to play both sides in a battle. So, um, so looking here, second Virginia, fourth Virginia, fifth Virginia, 27th, 33rd. That's the Stonewall Brigade right there. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and kind of merge them. Of course, they weren't called the Stonewall Brigade quite yet. They earned that name on this particular day. So I'm going to go ahead and... Oh, that's the Stonewall Brigade getting orders here, so... I'm going to go ahead and get these guns. Oh, man. There we go. Well, Zachary, that would make sense. You would expect the South to have better morale. Um, just from the standpoint that, for the most part, uh, they probably were a little more passionate about defending their home territory. Home field advantage and all that sort of thing. Somebody asked about me doing a naval battle. Not on this yet. I don't even know. I haven't checked to see if there are naval battles on this. So historically, the, the Confederate battle line was not... Uh, like the, the stand that Stonewall Jackson made was not you know right at the crest of the hill or even down a little ways. It was actually back here a ways, almost at the tree line. Uh, so when the Union came up, they were actually attacking on pretty flat ground. They weren't attacking uphill. Uh, and I think I'll actually go ahead and move my guns back a little ways. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. I, I, I could see how that would be very difficult uh, to do the naval battles on this. Guys, if you're not already aware, um, the user that's visualized history and lore, um, that is one of the folks who is involved in the creation of this mod. So if anybody knows what they're talking about, it would be them. So I'm, i got to check real quick because I feel like my sound is not working and it might just be because nothing's happening at the moment. Yeah, I'm not hearing any sound, so let me check something real quick, guys. Ah, uh, yeah, that would do it. Okay. Yeah, that's a good quote right there from Stonewall Jackson. Um, so, uh, if you're not familiar with the history of this battle... Uh, it was fought on a Sunday, which, of course, was much to the chagrin of uh, newly appointed General Stonewall, ja well, Thomas Jackson at the time. He hated fighting on a Sunday. He would only do it when absolutely necessary. Dude had a lot of quirks. Um, that's not even one of my guns. He... Uh, he was definitely a hypochondriac. He would suck on lemons constantly. He would sit on his horse with one hand up in the air because he thought it helped his organs sit better. And in fact, he was shot in the hand at this battle. And I believe I read somewhere that the surgeon was going to amputate his finger. And when he turned around to grab uh, the necessary tools to do that, and then he turned back around, Jackson had ridden off and decided he wasn't doing that. Uh, Zachary, no, it didn't crash. I just was uh, going to fix the sound because I had no sound playing for me anyway. So there's the Stonewall Brigade here. We're going to, I think, go ahead and... I don't know what my, my friend is doing here. He's just kind of pulling back, it looks like, which is fine. We're going to be on stronger turf that way. But uh, there's, a, there's a, a big statue to Stonewall Jackson probably right about here on the battlefield when you go. In fact, I'll do like I did yesterday. Uh, once we're done playing this, I will post uh, a link in the description of this video uh, to my visit to the Bull Run Battlefield. I, I only visited uh, some of the sites associated with the first Battle of Bull Run. The second battlefield, uh, Battle of Bull Run was much larger, and I only had a few hours on the battlefield, so I didn't really have time. Uh, to see all of those sites. So I mainly visited Matthews Hill, Henry Hill, uh, and most of the monuments that you see are right in this area of the battlefield anyway. 
Let's get the rest of our our units in position here. I'm gonna put my guns right up here, I think. Your men have been routed, sir. What men have been routed? I don't have any men. Oh boy, they're doing the usual thing with the cannons. Yeah, to get a um, to get a campaign for the Civil War, you have to go to the uh, the Empire Total War mod for the Civil War, which obviously is not nearly as beautiful as this one. So we've got to get oh, there's Hampton's Legion. So Wade Hampton, who commanded Hampton's Legion, uh, ended up governor of South Carolina after the war. It's going to be a while before I get. And I don't know what these guys are going to do. I'm waiting to put my men into position until I see what they do. So you can see how much bigger these units are since we're on Ultra. So I may have to go up and, uh, and hold the front lines here since he's not. And I'd really like to put my units into position to where we're firing on him as he's trying to cross this valley. Wolf the Gamer King. Uh, we'll see. Um, I might be able to do one later on today. And definitely the next stream that I do will be a multiplayer game. We'll try to get a couple folks who have this. So if you don't have the mod but you have um, Napoleon Total War, uh, the link should be in the description for the mod. If not, I will make sure it's in there later. Um, but yeah, let's plan on doing a multiplayer one next because obviously then you you get around the AI issues by, by using human opponents. Makes for much more much more solid gameplay that way. Let's get these guys going. So here come the Union over this way. You can see big force of Union soldiers coming that way, so I'm going to go ahead and put these guys up on the line to try and hit him as he's crossing. What general perished already? Beauregard. Oh, jeez. Well, that didn't take long. So Beauregard was in command of the troops who fired on Fort Sumter. Pierre Gustave Toutant Beauregard. He had a good solid uh, kind of Creole French name going there. There may not be much in the way of Union forces attacking in this direction, so we may have to reroute these guys over this way. The ACW Hardcore Discord. I think I already have, but I will double check and make sure because I may not have. Uh, where can I put these guns? Actually, I could probably keep them right there. Where's Stonewall? I'm getting myself turned around because the uh, the Union's attacking from a way I wasn't expecting them to. Let me check uh, check the map, see where my delivery is. Oh, it's still a little ways away. I think we're good. All right. Let's start checking all of my units one by one to see where they're at. And you start getting them all moving this way.
So these are some of my units. We're getting them into position now. I've got my guns going. Looks like we're doing a pretty good job of uh, bottling these guys up. Looks like they're throwing them back pretty good. But there's a lot more coming. Is there a belly button battle? No, there's no naval battles, uh, Nelson. Not for this mod. But there are a few kind of random Union forces over on this side. But it looks like most of them are headed over toward this direction. Let's try not to shoot into the backs of our own boys, okay? I'm gonna send the 24th Virginia over here. Oh, looks like there's a Confederate unit on that side of the creek already. Of course, this means they're gonna probably walk right through the lines. Hey, Caleb, we are doing well. Hope you are as well. Man, look at this massive blue coming across. Jeez. E. Guerre, I will, uh, I will do that. I'll check the Discord and get. Some, um, I'll, I'll start first with seeing if there's any of the viewers that want to play from my channel. Oh, look at that explosion! That was so cool. <laughs> Hey, fair point. Fog of War. In in the hardcore mod, there's Fog of War. Oh, yeah. Take a look. There they are. Good to know. Did not think about that. And I don't know what my ally's doing over here, but... Let's get the Loudon Artillery unlimbered. They can start firing. Is this one? That's not one of my artillery over there, is it? Okay. All right, we might need to get the Stonewall Brigade back where they were. There is a Union force that tried to cross right here, the 69th New York. I think that's part of the Excelsior Brigade, isn't it? Your men have been routed, sir. Where? Oh boy. Help us out here, boys. Fire into these guys as they cross. We're going to send this unit back. We're going to have to start preparing for the attack on Henry House Hill. Because there definitely is another force coming that way. General down? Or is that is that still Beauregard? No, Francis Bartow, who I believe was killed in this battle. I think I visited the monument to Barto. Barto and B were both. Okay. So I'm going to check. I'm just going to go one by one and look at all of my units in their position. So this is the uh, the second Virginia from the Stonewall Brigade right there. I think I think we're probably solid right now. 33rd Virginia 
Culpeper artillery is not mine. These are all my units here, though. That's allied. Allied. All right, we're going to take these guys over there, too. It's a bit of a hodgepodge right now. I've got guys everywhere. But there's a huge Union force coming this way. Okay. They're moving. They're moving. They're moving. Where's General Johnston? Let's get him over that direction, too. Check on all the artillery. Rockbridge artillery has not moved. Let's get them unlimbered. Uh-oh. Another general killed. Who was it this time? Irvin McDowell. Oh, ho, 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 ho. the Union Army commander goes down. My goodness. Mark, Ohio. You in Ohio? What part of Ohio are you in? All right. I think this artillery is firing. Yep. They're getting into position. They're already firing. Where's the 7th Louisiana? They're right there. Probably need to keep them there. Spread them out a little further. Wow. Look at that. My goodness. So anyway, let's talk a little more about the history of the, the first battle of Bull Run. Um, it was a Sunday afternoon. It's about 25 miles outside of Washington, D.C. So a lot of the D.C. society folks, including some congressmen and their wives, came out for a picnic to watch the battle. That did not end well. The, probably the best portrayal I've seen of that part of things was in um, the movie The Blue and the Gray, or the, the miniseries The Blue and the Gray. North and South shows a little bit of it too, but The Blue and the Gray probably does it the best. Peter, greetings in Sweden. It's uh, been sunny here in northeast Ohio for the last several days. We had some nasty storms. We got a tornado touchdown about 10 miles from my house last night. But didn't look like there was any significant damage. A ton of lightning. I was just in Connecticut a couple of months ago. My first time in Connecticut, actually. Flew into uh, Hartford. Speaking of Hartford, Connecticut, that's where Sam Colt's buried. The same cemetery also has Gideon Wells, who was the Secretary of the Navy during the Civil War. Ooh, cannonball just hit Henry House. Uh, the widow Henry, who lived in that house, was actually killed during this battle. Um, a shell hit hit her bedroom, I believe. And um, also another cool story, a lot of you may know this already, but uh, Wilmer McLean, his farm was on the, the Bull Run battlefield. And so after the battle of Bull Run, he moved to Appomattox, Virginia to get as far away from the war as possible and it ended up being his home that was used to sign the surrender between Grant and Lee. So the war started in his backyard and it ended in his parlor, is what some people like to say. So who's this? This is the 2nd Virginia here. We do have some Union regiments coming this way. And I don't have much over there to stop it. Oh, I'm going to have to check out Class of 61. I'm not entirely sure I've seen that one. All right, we need to get some more help over here. This isn't like uh, yesterday's battle where you know everything 
on my side was in a pretty contained little area. We're much more spread out here. Even though if you visit the battlefield, the battlefield of Manassas is not, at least the first bull run battlefield, not really that big. Nate, that's awesome. Um, hope you're enjoying that. I do love Ultimate General Civil War. I'll tell you what would be the perfect game to me. Um, and I think that we have a game coming that's going to be like that. Would be a game that's got the best elements of this, like this mod, in terms of how good it looks and the attention to detail and the, and the right units and things like that. Um, combined with Ultimate General Civil War combined with Scourge of War. And I think that there's a game coming that's going to be some of that. It's called Grand Tactician. It looks really cool, and I can't wait to get a playable copy of it. All right, they're coming. So, interesting thing about this battle, too, is that... Um, The, uh, there were Confederate units wearing blue. There was, I think, at least one Wisconsin unit wearing gray. Um, so there's a lot of confusion on the battlefield. Yeah, so um, I saw somebody mention something about Major Richard Winters. And, uh, yeah, he um, grew up in Ephrata, which is not far from Gettysburg. It's in Lancaster County. I've been to Major Winters' grave there. Um, it's uh, it's probably 45 minutes to an hour at most from Gettysburg. Oh, another gen Union general has gone down. Ah, Colonel Samuel Heinzelman. So, um, some of the people who fought at this battle, um, there was a very brand new to command. A uh, brigade commander named William Tecumseh Sherman, uh, who commanded a brigade here. Um, a lot of the kind of big future stars on both sides. Uh, I think Richard Yule and James Longstreet were commanding brigades here. All right, let's see what's going on. Let's watch the second Virginia in action. Yeah, Great Graham, I have War of Rights, and at some point I'll, I'll probably get back to that. I've played it here and there. Man, these guys are facing off against the 4th Michigan's got 450 men, 338 in the 2nd New, New Hampshire. You can see men falling left and right right now. Uh, they're, they're just facing off against too many. Who just got routed? Oh boy. Come on, boys. That's part of the Stonewall Brigade. You can't route on me yet. Man, 33rd of Virginia is facing off against three regiments at least. Yeah, Sherman was a brigade commander at the first bull run. Second Virginia finally broke. Uh, I probably should have just stayed put on Henry Hill when this all started instead of trying to cover two different spots. I think I'm paying for it now. All right, we're gonna get, get these guns switched over to fire on these guys and let's get them firing canister.
Hey, Nate, take care, man. Make sure you uh, hit that notification bell so you can get notified whenever there's a live stream. Love to have you back again for the next one. All right, 33rd, come on, let's pour some fire into the first Minnesota. Oh, that's the first Minnesota! Fourth Virginia. Oh, what are you doing, guys? Fire on them. There you go. They're rallied. Not sure why we're not firing at the moment. Let's get them facing the right direction. All right, we're going to move up right here. Wow, this is going to be close. Combat right here. Getting into some melee combat here. There we go, boys. Pour it into them. Does Hearts of Iron 4 cost anything? Yes, the base game. I, I want to say it's under $20, though. Sorry, Zachary. The first Minnesota's coming this way. I have to shoot at him. There they are right there. Oh, now they're charging at me. Melee combat ensues. They're wearing red. I wonder if that was what they were really... I'm sure it was, or they wouldn't have it this way. You can see how different the Union uniforms are. They're not kind of consistent like they were later in the war. Of course, a lot of the Confederate commanders were still wearing their Union uniforms during this battle. The army they had just so recently resigned from. All right, I think we've, we have successfully thrown this attack back. Yes, sir. Wait for order, sir. We can go ahead and switch these guys off of canister now. Go back to round shot. Hey, I love me the first Minnesota, but I had to defend my ground. <coughs> That's pretty much how the first battle of Bull Run ended up for the Union. <laughs> right there, everybody running. Let's look and see. We've got something going on over here. Wait for order, sir. Who's that? 23rd U.S. Battalion. Hey, be nuts or what's going on? Uh, Zakawe, this is the first battle of Bull Run. Manassas, as it was known in the south. Waiting for order, sir. Got a little crazy for me at first. I forgot that there's fog of war on this mod, which is great. I'm glad there is. That's the way it should be. Uh, but I did not operate accordingly, and I initially went to counter what I thought was the main Union attack over here and left Henry House Hill wide open for the other half of his attack Reporting, General. man this is where some of the worst of the fighting took place look at that that is so it's it's ugly but it, it's amazing and beautiful at the same time because it looks like what you would expect a civil war battlefield to look like you read some of the um some of the accounts of some of the battles talking about how you could walk from one end of a a field to the other without stepping on the ground because there were so many bodies. I know they talked about that at Cold Harbor. Uh, Shiloh, they talked about it being like that. Jasper, how's it going, man? I'm glad you're here. Hope all is well in Belgium. Hope to visit your country someday. I would love to see um, some of the sites associated with 
like Bastogne. I would love to visit Bastogne. I think that would be amazing. A lot of our own, my own country's history. Uh, in Belgium, of course, Waterloo is there. A lot of history for a small country. I think things are winding down with this one. We might be able to finish it off and then do another battle. I'm just kind of getting everybody into position. We'll wait and see who reforms because I can see some of the Union units reforming back there. Uh, Great Graham, yes. This is the American Civil War hardcore sub mod. Uh, for Napoleon Total War. It's a standalone sub mod that's uh, kind of picks up where the American Civil War mod leaves off and, and adds and improves on it. Yeah, and Visualize History and Lore is a great resource if you have questions about the mod because that is one of the folks involved in making this mod. Yes, B. Nutzer, excellent point about Railroad. The South won this battle because of Railroad. Uh, Johnston's army was in uh, up at Harper's Ferry, and they threw them on trains and got them uh, unloaded at Manassas Junction just in time to come in and turn the tide of the battle. There were actually uh, two Union armies and two Confederate armies. Uh, there was a, a Union army. I'm trying to remember the name of the guy who was in command of that one that was up around Harper's Ferry as well. That one stayed there and didn't realize that the army that they thought they were facing um, I want to say it was Franklin, but I could be wrong about that name. I don't think he's coming back, at least not for now. There's still one Union unit over here that's fighting. Let's go deal with him. Looks like he's breaking because he's facing an allied unit over here. Well, Johnston, yeah, visualize history. Johnston was the Confederate commander. I'm trying to think of the name of the Union commander who had the other army that was facing off against Johnston. I can't remember his name because he wasn't somebody who played prominently in the war later. Well, while you guys are watching that, I'm, I'm trying to look it up. Uh, Patterson, Robert Patterson was the uh, the other Union commander. Patterson's unit uh, army wasn't at this battle. They were the ones that were supposed to be facing off against Johnston. Johnston put his army on a train and left Patterson kind of hanging out there by himself. Checking on the first Minnesota. <laughs> let me let me see if I can find them. They're one. Of the, oh my gosh! Look at this. It's like a swarm of Union units that are all waiting to try and march around this house. There's the first Minnesota right there. They're they're the ones with the uh, the cool hats and the red uniforms. Kralith, uh, no, I actually went to school to be a history teacher, but I've never actually had a job in the field. Um, I actually, my, my day job is uh, as a national speaker for an organization called Rachel's Challenge. Um, I go into schools all over the country speaking about kindness, compassion, how we treat one another, something that we could probably stand to do a little bit better at right now. I actually work for the family of uh, one of the victims of the Columbine shooting. They're good friends of ours, and we actually, my, my daughter is named after her. I think this one's pretty well set. We can go ahead and, and drop out of this. 
even though it might mean that I, I get defeated. Uh, let's look at the numbers. Beauregard only loses 137 men. Uh, my forces lose 730, but we inflict 1,837 casualties. Uh, and you can see here how things went for Irving McDowell, who was killed, and then Colonel David Hunter. All right, let me check on my status of my delivery. I don't know. They're not even showing the map anymore for that. So um, let's take about a three-minute break here, guys. I'm going to go check on something, and then we're going to do another battle. All right, that was a quicker break than I thought. Hope you uh, didn't go too far. Uh, Mark, I appreciate that. Thank you, sir. All right, let's, uh, I want to do, I want to try to keep it to the small battles because I don't want to have anything too major here. We know the F Fort Wagner one's not working right, so how about, all right, we'll do Pickett's Charge. How's that? Let's do it. This should be interesting. Let you young men do what they need to do. Wilson's Creek. Yeah, that would be a good battle. That was out in the West. So it looks like, am I going to be Hancock? Oh, now I'm getting a text that my order will be arriving shortly. So I guess maybe we'll go ahead and keep that break going here um but i'll go ahead and get get started and then i'll pause i might be pausing here in a couple minutes but i shouldn't be gone more than three or four minutes when i do this is what happens when you plan a live stream a day in advance life happens <laughs> and gets in the way of things So uh, Hancock's second corps, and then, of course, John C. Robinson. Um, I think he was one of the division commanders. So let's pause for a second so we can kind of get the lay of the land a little bit here. Um, who am I in command of? I got a big force here. I've got the 19th Maine. Pretty much for me, I just have to kind of keep everybody where they are. I want to get these guys on the opposite side of the fence. As best I can. Oh, they're here. All right, hold on one second. Let's pause this. I'll be right back, guys. All right, I'm back. Let's do this. No more distractions. Okay. Is there a webcam? No, I don't typically because I'm, I'm doing this in my basement and it's not a very good look and my wife would kill me. But at some point I might get back to doing a webcam while I'm doing this. Zachary, my face is all over my channel, man, because I, I got probably 40 videos on my channel of me visiting historic sites. So see any one of those and you'll see what I look like. 
And again, this is a spot where I've done videos uh, from this, the location of Pickett's Church. Do I gotta unlimber my cannon? Uh, no, but these guys are gonna be shooting right into their guns there, or to the to their own ammunition. Looks like for the most part everybody's pretty well set where they need to be. Artillery reporting. Who's this here? That's first battery, New York Light Artillery. Oh, do I get to command Alonzo Cushing's battery? I believe I do. Alonzo Cushing got the Medal of Honor for what he did that day, but it took a long time for him to receive it. It was uh, actually under President Obama that he was given the Medal of Honor. And they had a ceremony with his family. Who we got up here? So there's the 8th Ohio. The 8th Ohio uh, actually was one of the units that when Pickett's Charge came in, they came out here and started firing into their flanks. Uh, Standard's Paper Collar uh, Brigade, the Vermont Boys, did the same thing, I think, on the other side, on the south end of the, of the charge. Yeah, if you just go to my channel, just look for the history on location videos. There's a ton of them. I actually had just one, my most recent one was from Boston, visiting the uh, USS Constitution. Uh, my allied boys are riding out. Oh, boy. So I basically am commanding the center of the Union defense. Orders. I'm going to pull these guns back. Yeah, visualize, I did notice that the casualties aren't as extreme as they used to be, which is good. They, Yeah, that does make it feel more realistic because things aren't happening quite so quickly. Oh, you saw the first Minnesota? I'll have to look and see where they were. So who's this here? There's uh, General Hayes. Hayes was one of the uh, commanders under Hancock. This is such a cool view right here. Can you imagine what that must have looked like to the Union troops as they were watching that attack come in? Yeah, and uh, be not, not sir. Uh, what happened? Oh, that's one of those units. Oh, and see, this is one of the things the AI does that you would avoid by playing multiplayer. Is that he's riding his guns way, right out in, into the lines. So we'll definitely have to get into some multiplayer battles. Um, yeah. So uh, in Alonzo Cushing's case, it's baffling to me that it took that long for him to get a Medal of Honor. I mean, this is a, guy's, a guy whose heroism at Gettysburg was well known and well documented for many years. I mean, I knew about Alonzo Cushing as a kid and couldn't understand why he didn't have a Medal of Honor. The guy, even when the rest of his battery had either been wounded or had fallen back, uh, stayed at his guns uh, over here. It was over near the angle. Um, stayed at his guns firing repeated canister rounds into the enemy probably took out hundreds of enemy soldiers until he was finally shot uh, several times and, and finally killed by a gunshot to the mouth that brought him down um but uh alonzo cushing i visited his grave and that's again another one of the videos that i've done uh, my visit last fall to west point uh, he's buried at west point and i've also visited the spot uh in my my short video that i did uh, at the site of the angle, this area, which is this area right here. You can see why it's called the angle. Uh, Alonzo Cushing's battery is, I believe, this one right here. Battery A, 4th U U.S. Artillery. Scummy, how's it going? The max range on rifles in artillery. Artillery was definitely well over a mile. Um, the rifles... Probably max effective range, I don't know, 300, 350 yards.
Oh, they're left of the 19th Maine, you said, the first Minnesota. Isn't that an amazing thing that the first Minnesota, um, here they are right here, what's left of them. This is a unit that, you know, the 20th Maine gets all the glory for Gettysburg, and they deserve some. Uh, but I believe that what the first Minnesota did is far more compelling a story than the 20th Maine. Um, on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg, the 20th Maine was up here on Cemetery Ridge. And because Sickles had moved his line forward up to here uh, and left this gap between the 3rd Corps and the 2nd Corps, uh, when Sickles was repulsed, uh, the northern end of Longstreet's assault was coming toward a gap in the Union lines on Cemetery Ridge. And they were waiting for Union reinforcements to come from Culp's Hill over on the far right of the line. But they hadn't arrived yet. And so, so Hancock, the second corps commander, rides over here, finds the, the first Minnesota. William Colville was the name of the commanding officer. And uh, he finds him and orders him to charge into one or at least one, maybe two, Confederate entire brigades. There are 282 men in the 1st Minnesota, and they charge into uh, probably 1,500 to 2,000 men and with 80% casualties by time for the Union to reinforce the line and probably saved the battle on the second day. Uh, not enough people know that story, but that was the first Minnesota. And then where are they on the third day? But right at the center of the line when Pickett's Charge comes in. And likewise, the Confederate unit who suffered the highest casualties during the war was the 26th North Carolina. And that was on the first day of the Battle of Gettysburg. They lost 80% casualties. They were in Pickett's Charge. So these two units who had been completely decimated uh, in the first two days of fighting still participated in this part of the fight on the third day. He's not here yet. Let's take a look and see where he's at. Who we got here? There's Garnett's brigade. Dick Garnett um, had to ride a horse. He had gotten into uh, a big tiff with Stonewall Jackson. Stonewall Jackson actually accused him of cowardice. Uh, but then, of course, Jackson was killed, and so there was no chance for Dick Garnett to redeem himself. You can see holes getting blown in his line here. Um... Garnett was, I think he'd been kicked by a horse or something. He couldn't walk, but he refused to be a coward and decided he was going to participate in the charge anyway, but ride a horse. And of course, made him an easy target. And his horse was seen bolting back toward the Confederate lines, but Garnett was never found after the battle. Where's A.P. Hill? A.P. Hill, um, he had units in this charge, but did not, I don't think he participated in himself in this charge because all the units were under Longstreet's command. But A.P. Hill would have been up here. Uh, the 3rd Corps held the center of the Confederate line. Uh, the 2nd Corps was on the left over by Culp's Hill, and then the 1st Corps was on the right. So these are probably some of A.P. Hill's units here. Yeah, 3rd Corps. So that's Garnett. Uh, it was Garnett and Kemper up front for Pickett, and then Armistead's brigade was behind them. Uh, so there's uh, Archer's brigade, which was heavily involved on the first day. They were like the first uh, unit to, I think the first Tennessee may have even been the first Confederate unit to go into action at Gettysburg. Yeah, the next Total War is Troy. I believe it's out or about to be out. Yes, John Mays. I am really excited about Grand Tactician. I was talking about it a little while ago. Oh, man, that could be a really, really good game if it ends up being as good as it looks. I'm, Yeah, I'm definitely excited about that, and I believe I will be among the first people to get a playable copy of that game when they start going out. At least that's my understanding. Yeah, uh, Garnet was probably just unrecognizable after the uh, battle. And yeah, most of those guys were moved to Hollywood Cemetery. I had an uncle who was in the 26th North Carolina, was killed on the first day of the battle. All right, one of our generals fell. 
No, Major General John Newton, who uh, Newton ended up being the new commander of the First Corps. Uh, one of the big travesties of the Battle of Gettysburg was uh, how Ab Abner Doubleday was treated uh, for his part. Doubleday had a, had a big role in um, taking over and leading the First Corps after General Reynolds was killed. He was actually in command of the First Corps anyway because Reynolds um, had actually taken command of that entire wing of the, of the Union Army. Uh, so when Reynolds was killed, it was, Un uh, it was Doubleday's corps, but um, Oliver Howard blamed Doubleday for the Union retreat on the first day, even though it was the 11th Corps that had collapsed. And Doubleday was replaced by John Newton in command of the 1st Corps. Stone Age Total War. Yeah, John Mays, uh, I believe, this summer for Grand Tactician. Oh, there's another General Fell. Really? I didn't realize that Kemper was... Uh, oh, there's John C. Robinson killed. That is really cool that you were able to go and visit his uh, personal grave. Kemper was shot in the abdomen, was expected. They said it was a mortal wound, but he survived. Ended up, I think, the Speaker of the Virginia House of Representatives. Um... Or was he, he may have even been the governor of Virginia after the war. I can't remember. Um, but, and of course, Armistead was killed. Armistead's uncle um, was in command of Fort McHenry uh, during the battle in the War of 1812 in which the Star-Spangled Banner was written. Uh, Armistead's buried in Maryland. He's, he was from Maryland originally. I think he's buried, in, I want to say Frederick, Maryland, in a Catholic cemetery. Oh yeah, the Iron Man Menace. I've seen a lot about about the Confederate statues being torn down, and um, yeah, visualize. I would love to see that. That that is awesome. That is what a cool experience that must have been. So it looks like the main part of the attack's hitting over on the left. There's Kemper's brigade there. Not a lot coming my way so far. Let's go ahead and just watch a couple of these Confederate units. Um, General Patton that we know from World War II, his uncle was killed in Pickett's Charge. Um, famously portrayed by Ted Turner in the movie Gettysburg. You see him kind of crossing a fence and getting shot in the chest. Uh, that was Patton's uncle. Patton's grandfather was also a Confederate uh, colonel or general and was killed a year later at Opaquan, I think it was, in, in the Shenandoah Valley. And of course, Patton's, I think, great, great, great grandfather was Hugh Mercer, who was a, um, a Patriot general, Brigadier General under Washington, a good friend of George Washington's, was killed at Princeton, bayoneted to death a week after the Battle of Trenton. John Mays, there should be a link to my Discord in the description of this video. If not, it's in the description of almost all of my other videos that are coming out. Hanson, the next poll. Um, yeah, good question. I'm working on that. I've got the results for the first half of the voting for the round of 64. I'm going to put out the other half of the round of 64 probably in the next day or two. And then we'll announce the results and we'll go to the next round of voting. How do I feel about the Confederate statues? I, honestly, I can see both sides, uh, and I'll tell you why. Uh, on one hand, you can argue that, yes, they were traitors, um, but then there are statues of George Washington in England, and he would be kind of the same way. Um, you could also argue the fact that the United States government does not view them as traitors. They've not only been pardoned, but they also, based on a law that was passed, I think, 50 or 60 years ago, uh, Confederate veterans are considered to be U.S. military veterans. Uh, so from that standpoint, the government views Confederates as U.S. soldiers. Um, now, on the other hand, a lot of those statues 
were erected during kind of the Jim Crow era, uh, during a time of segregation, and they were erected specifically as kind of an, with the attitude of white supremacy. So I can see why from that standpoint, folks would want them torn down. George Pickett was killed. Now he was a major general, not a brigadier at this point, but uh, we can overlook that. Uh, Pickett was killed. Wow, that's something. Well, at least he doesn't have the anguish of seeing his boys torn apart now. So I can see both sides. Um, I don't really have a dog in the fight. I'm a northern white guy. So, you know, I, I kind of stay out of that argument, but I can, I can definitely see both sides of that argument. You a building, sir. Desert Fox, how's it going? Yeah, there are Confederates buried in Mrs. Lee's Rose Garden in Arlington National Cemetery. Um, also, a lot of Confederates rejoined the Union Army after the war. Um, there were some Confederate generals who ended up U.S. generals after the war. Uh, I have lots of family myself who were Confederates. Uh, none of them owned slaves. And that's, you know, that's, that's one of the tough things about all of this is that, uh, yes, the political reason for the war was slavery. Let's not fool around and say it was states' rights. The, the men in charge, the people who led the movement for secession were doing it because of slavery. Let's be honest about that. That said, the rank and file uh, Confederate soldier was not fighting for slavery because the rank and file Confederate soldier for the most part did not have slaves. None of my family members who fought in the Confederate army owned a single slave. Um, oh, Johnson Pettigrew was killed. I believe he was killed historically um, was he killed in this battle? I, I always confuse him and Pender. Because Pettigrew, I think, was killed in this battle. Pender was killed in the retreat, or vice versa. Pettigrew was a North Carolina professor. I think from the University of North Carolina. Um, I'm also a northern white guy who happens to be a descendant of slaves. Uh, I had a slave ancestor, my third great grandmother, which would be great, great, great. I'm not saying third grade. She wasn't in third grade. Um, my great, great, great grandmother was a woman named Cheney Caudle, who was a slave um, in Kentucky, in, uh, in eastern Kentucky. My great grandmother, um, who lived during my lifetime, was listed as mulatto in most of the records. Um, so I'm about one, Ancestry DNA says I'm about one-tenth African, because I've got a little bit of black ancestry on both sides of my family, but, um, okay, Pettigrew was the one who was mortally wounded on the retreat, so I must be thinking of Dorsey Pender, um, who was wounded during this fight, who was a division commander. Okay, he died on, he died, um, I believe he was wounded at Gettysburg, but survived until a couple of weeks after. Yeah, so imagine, um, yeah, Zikalway, that's true. You know, you could apply the same thing to the German army during World War II. Uh, the, the average German private was not a Nazi. He was fighting for his country. Um, same thing with Confederates. Was their cause a good one? No, not necessarily. But to the average Confederate soldier, he was fighting because he saw the Union army as an invading force that was invading his state and that's a reality uh you can argue the politics of it all you want but that's the reality um for him it was an invasion and he was defending his home uh for the po politicians different story they were fighting to keep and maintain uh slavery there's no doubt about that Oh, Gettysburg's fantastic, Mal. I love it. Um, I wish it didn't focus so hard on the 20th Maine and, and skip things like the first Minnesota, but the, the movie Gettysburg's based on the book, The Killer Angels, which has point of view characters and Chamberlain's one of the point of view characters. Uh, so that's why you get his story so heavily focused on uh, in that movie.
my daughter's YouTube name, I'll type it in because it's hard to kind of just say and understand. It's Gory Gaming 24601. She's got 130,000 subscribers. She, uh, when she's making videos every day, she adds about 1,000 subscribers a day. She's way more popular than I will ever be. No, the 20th Maine was in the 5th Corps. Uh, the 1st Minnesota is part of the 2nd Corps. And uh, a lot of people don't realize that Gettysburg was Joshua Chamberlain's first battle in command of the 20th Maine. He'd only taken command not long before the battle because Adelbert Ames, who was the commanding officer, had been promoted to brigade command um, in the 11th Corps. And Adelbert Ames was the, uh, I think he was the governor of Mississippi after the war. Uh, was one of the, I think he might have been the last Union general officer to die. He died in the 1930s. Anthony, not to my knowledge, any relation to um, Neville Chamberlain, but that doesn't mean it couldn't be way back. Uh, Joshua Chamberlain was governor of Maine after the war. Ended up president of Bowdoin College, which is where he was. He was a professor at Bowdoin College. They're getting closer now over here. Um, Chamberlain had requested a leave of absence to go enlist. It was denied, so he took a sabbatical and said he was going to Europe, and instead he enlisted. He was actually offered command of a regiment, but very wisely understood that he wasn't ready to command a regiment, so he took second in command of the 20th Maine. So another cool story about Chamberlain, if you've never heard about his actions uh, at Appomattox. It's one of my favorite stories uh, from the Civil War is uh, Chamberlain, by the time of Appomattox, had been wounded so badly that a lot of northern newspapers had actually printed his obituary because he was shot through both hips at Petersburg, wounded six times, I think, in all. Uh, everybody thought he was going to die. He survived, ends up a brevet major general, ends up in command, uh, I think, of a division at the end of the war. Uh, he was given the ceremonial duty of accepting the Confederate surrender at Appomattox as they laid down their arms. Um, and uh, when, I think it was, I want to say it was John Gordon, uh, who was another incredible story himself, um, when he was marching his troops past Chamberlain, Chamberlain called his men to attention uh, to salute the defeated Southerners. And then uh, Chamberlain, actually, him and, and Gordon both, uh, in their memoirs, described this scene. Uh, and, and just the way that the language they used in describing it was really cool. Um, John Gordon actually called Chamberlain the knightliest soldier in the Federal Army. Um, and, and so Gordon returns the salute with this kind of movement of his sword and his horse. And it's just such a cool moment uh, for these armies who had fought so hard against each other for years and had seen all their buddies die to, to kind of honor each other that way. And Grant was very magnanimous as well in how he honored the defeated South. Uh, he and, and Lincoln were very much of like mind when it came to how to receive the South back into the, the Union. Oversimplified Civil War, yeah. I love over oversimplified videos. He's got some cool stuff. He's got some really good stuff. He just did one about Henry VIII. Yeah, Chamberlain actually ended up dying of his wounds something like, I don't know, 40 or 50 years after the war. Um, it said he was one of the last people to die of, his, uh, of the Civil War. Have I seen an ironclad or a U-boat before? No, I have not. Not in real life. Uh, who's this up here? 69th PA. So the Confederates are still coming, man. I mean, they, they've got a lot of units still on the way here. Do I prefer this mod or Ultimate General Civil War? Um, I, I love how this this one looks. The beauty, I mean, you can't get past the just how amazing this looks and just kind of being able to watch the men in action is something amazing. You can't compare the two because they're so different. I wish I could have a game like Ultimate General Civil War 
that looked like this. Uh, my ancestor Bryce was in the 26th North Carolina. Um, I'd have to look and see what company. I want to say off the top of my head, Company I, but I'm not sure. There's one in Chicago. Interesting. I'm only about six hours from Chicago. Who's this here? This is uh, this is Pender's division. This is part of the Third Corps here. Yeah, lucid moment, uh, especially the last two years of the American Civil War. Uh, by that point, the tactics had finally started catching up to the, um, the technology. See, the technology in the Civil War, uh, because of the mini ball, because of rifled uh, guns, made for deadly accuracy. Uh, and so the tactics were outdated. Men standing shoulder to shoulder, um, you know, just made for easy targets. And so they finally started to figure that out by 1864. That's why you see a lot of trench warfare, uh, even by the time you get to Cold Harbor and then, of course, at Petersburg, because the tactics were finally catching up to, uh, to the technology. So, yeah, it was kind of a preview of World War One. Yeah, Darth, uh, I think Darth was working on the uh, Ultimate General series now, isn't he? All right, Confederates are breaking through the initial line here at the at the angle now. And this is where they, we call it the high water mark because you got the copes of trees here and you've got the area called the angle, but then there was a counterattack by the Union forces. They were able to kind of push that away, so... Um, that's what we're going to do now, actually. Let's get up here and push these guys back. These are some Allied troops coming to help out. 12th New Jersey up here. We're going to move them up here onto the flank. Come on, boys. You can do this. Cold Mountain, yes, I like Cold Mountain. I love their portrayal of the of the crater at the beginning. Wow, they're really pushing through. This is uh, Heath's division, Pettigrew's, Pettigrew's brigade. So these are the folks who led the attack on day one of the battle. They're breaking through on me over here. Who do we got back here? That's just General Haro. There's General Hancock. I've got him way too far back. Um, General Meade's headquarters was back here, too. Who do we got here? 7th West Virginia. Let's move them up. Yeah, Mal, you're right. Uh, just the fact that any of them made it this far. And the reason why uh, Armistead's brigade was able to break through here, because they were behind. Uh, Kemper and Garnet's brigades were on the front line, and Armistead's brigade was marching behind them. So where Kemper and Garnet's brigades dissolved by the time they got to the wall, Armistead's brigade uh, largely made it to the Emmitsburg Road intact and then came under fire as they came up the, the slope. Man, they really did break through. Can we get these guys unlimbered again? So we'll have to reform our units after they break here. First Delaware's hanging on. At least for now. Yeah, the U.S. didn't fight for uh, very long in World War One. By the time they got into the war, it was into 1918. Um, but interestingly, the U.S. 
arrives in force in Europe just as the Eastern Front collapses because of the Russian Civil War. Oh, Gettysburg during the anniversaries is fantastic. I, I was there for the 125th back when I was a kid. Hey guys, make sure if you haven't already, if you hit, would hit that like button, I would greatly appreciate that. Uh, with all videos and with any YouTuber that you support, uh, I, I've been mentioning this a lot lately because it's important to mention. Um, YouTube, the way that YouTube's algorithm recommends videos to people uh, is it determines what people like and how it determines what people like is whether or not you hit that like button whether or not you watch the whole video, because if you watch five minutes of a video and click off, they figure you didn't like it and you went away from it. Uh, and then leaving comments. Uh, those things all help tremendously. Oh, what general fell this time? Isaac Trimble. Isaac Trimble, oh man, the guy who plays him in the movie, I love him. He's such a cool dude, and he's been in a lot of movies. He's actually the narrator at the beginning of Gettysburg, uh, the movie. Isaac Trimble was a division commander without a command going into Gettysburg. Uh, and then he was given command of, I think of, of Pender's division during Pickett's charge. I don't know, it looks like we might be able, might be throwing these guys back after all. Most of the Confederate forces are breaking and falling back now. So he broke through temporarily, but he fell back pretty quickly. Let's head back down this way. This is where he kind of made his main breakthrough. We're still fighting. The 20th Massachusetts is still fighting some melee combat. Lots of Massachusetts boys. First Minnesota hasn't lost a man. That's good news. Dead horse right here. A couple of dead horses. Atheist 3, how's it going? Uh, there will be another War Thunder stream pretty soon. I'm just waiting to get all of my new units unlocked. They're supposed to be doing that for me. Uh, Hanson Lusitania was part of it. It was one of a number of things. You also have to look at the Zimmerman telegram as being one of the reasons why, and just unrestricted submarine warfare in general. Zakawe, thank you. I appreciate you always leaving a like. Thank you, guys. I see a bunch of new likes just showed up on here. Okay, here's a... Uh, Here's a question, and I know a couple of our European friends on here. I rest assured that the first Minnesota will lose men. Um, some of our European friends are probably more likely to know this. What was the deadliest maritime death toll of all time? What ship had more, more loss of life than any other? Hint, it was during a war. But it was mostly civilians. See, see how quickly somebody can get this one. I believe it's off the shore of Poland is where the sinking, uh, where the where the shipwreck is. I think we threw him back, boys. I'm gonna get some folks up on the stone wall here at the angle. Who's this here? Is that the Eighth Ohio? No, it's Twelfth PA. All right, let's get some of these boys back on the line because we got some Confederates that are still shooting away here. 38th North Carolina. Yes, the Wilhelm Gustloff. That is it. Oh, no, Zachary. Titanic, 1,500. Wilhelm Gustloff lost 9,000. 
it was um, it was a German ship that was uh, evacuating primarily German civilians. There were some military as well, uh, torpedoed by a, a, a Soviet submarine. And I think it was about 9,000 who died. The, the water temperature was like 10 degrees Fahrenheit and most of the people froze to death in the water. Kind of like the Titanic. Most of the deaths on Titanic were people who froze to death in the water after it sank. Zakawe, that's a good that's a good point. Um, yeah, you're right. We do take pleasure in mayhem and, and those kinds of things. You know, I do I am drawn more to military and war history than I am to the peaceful parts of history. I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just a guy thing or what. Mal, no, it wasn't a troop ship. It was actually like a cruise ship. It was like a pleasure ship that had been repurposed to evacuate people. Like they'd even drained the pool to use to, to house people. Mr. Beep, I did not know that. That's interesting. All right, we're we're gonna be wrapping this up here pretty soon, guys. We'll uh, we'll wait and see if any of these guys reform. But uh, I do have a uh, my next end of a new beginning Hearts of Iron Four video has been uploaded, and that'll be going live in just a little while. That's been a pretty popular series. It looks like some of my allied units have decided to counterattack. There's the 114th PA. Those are Zouaves, I think. Fancy looking boys. The 5th New Hampshire. 5th New Hampshire. Cool story. Not cool for them. Um, more casualties during the entire war than any other unit on either side. The 5th New Hampshire. The, the number of men that were lost in the 5th New Hampshire just boggles the mind during the war. Vigo, I appreciate that. Vigo the Carpathian. Cool username, man. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Lucid moment. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mr. Beep, thank you. That's, that's cool. And yeah, guys, check out the Discord. We've always got some interesting conversations going on over there. And I'm always looking for new ideas, for suggestions. Uh, for channels on the Discord, want to make that make this as much a community as I can. Granted, it's my channel, so to speak, but uh, I do this because I love connecting with people who are interested in the same things that I am. And you guys love history as much as I do, so I love the opportunity to interact and talk and, and learn. I learn new things every time. I hope you guys learn a little bit of something here and there from me as well. Mao, yeah, I hear you. And I think the point of Colonel Freemantle's character, yeah, I agree. He's, he's very British, the T and all that stuff. I think his character mainly exists um, to, for, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically to help understand the context of the war. Uh, so he gives an excuse for the Confederates to kind of explain their side and their viewpoint of things where they probably wouldn't have had a reason to talk about those things. Um, so that's largely why his character is there. Uh, Mark, take care, man. Um, yes, Bailey, I am Gory Gaming's dad. And I love Chick-fil-A as well. So I think this one's pretty well done. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. Um, Let's take a look at the casualties. It says Valiant Defeat because I didn't take all the, the, the points and everything. But uh, So Pickett actually only lost 618 men. The losses are pretty even on both sides. So one of the things, after the battle, uh, as the Confederates were retreating, the Union tr troops were, were chanting, Fredericksburg, Fredericksburg. I think you see that in the movie, actually. Um, because, of course, they were reversed in roles because the same thing had happened at Fredericksburg with the Union Army attacking uh, an even much stronger position than the one that the Union held here. Um, 
but uh, we're going to wrap it up right here. Uh, thank you guys so much once again. I'm going to try to stream as often as possible, and I will try to post both in Discord and also here on YouTube to let you know what and when I will be streaming whenever possible. Uh, but thank you guys for, for your support, for being a part of this channel. We'll see you again soon.